Grade 4 Math, number 94, Naming Lines and Line Segments. Yeah, we have to name them, otherwise we wouldn't be able to figure out what they are or which ones they are. So remember, a line is a straight path of points that goes on forever in each direction. See how it has two arrow points going in each direction? It goes on and on. A line segment is a part. It's a segment of a line, and it has two endpoints. It stops. It only goes that certain amount of distance. A ray is a part of a line with one endpoint on one side, and then the other side has the arrow point and goes on forever and ever. Okay? We use alphabetical letters in consecutive order, capitalized, like A, B, A, B, C, D, E, F, P, Q, R, X, Y, Z, in order uh, to label them. We could do it backwards, B, A, C, B, A, as long as they're still in order, whether they're forward or backwards, as long as they're in order. Okay? Lines can cross each other and make angles. See that? Two lines, one here and one here, and they're crossing each other and they're making these angles inside. Okay? If we wanted to label a line, remember, it's got to be capital letters and they've got to be in order. Any ones doesn't matter. We can call this PQ. We could call it AB. We could call it GH, as long as they're in order. And we could also say it the other way around, backwards, QP, BA, whatever. Okay? When we label these, we pick our letters in order, AB. These do not have to be CD. They could be, if we wanted them to be. But if we wanted to name them X and Y, we could. These have to be in order of each other, and these have to be in order of each other, but they don't have to be all in order. You could. We could have called this CD, but it doesn't have to be, okay? Line segments can create polygons. We've got four line segments. One, two, three, four. And they made a polygon. So this could be uh, line segment AB, then we can name this one C and this one D. We could call this polygon ABCD, but we could also say that this is line segment AB or BA, you know, backwards or forwards, all right? This one, this group of line segments, these three created a triangle. We could say that this is X, this is Y, and this is Z, as long as they're in order. Okay? We can say it's ZYX, or this is line segment ZX. But the three of them are in order. See that? XYZ. Two rays can make an angle. This ray starts here and continues on forever, and this ray starts here and continues on forever, but they made an angle inside right there. See? When we label a ray, it's just like labeling the lines and the line segments. The only difference is, if there's a point that meets in the middle, we want that one to have a middle letter. So this would be like A, B, C. We could have named it A, B, C. But when we say that we're talking about this angle, you have to remember that the B has to be in the middle. Whatever letter is here has to fall into the middle of the label. So this would be A, B, C. See how the B landed in the middle of our label right here? We could call it C, B, A, angle, C, B, A, but that B has to be in the middle. Boy, that's a funky looking A, isn't it? The B has to be in the middle, and we can also call it angle B. See? It's got to be in the middle because that's the vertex. That's where the two of them are meeting, okay? Did you know that the angle could also be so big it wrapped around and almost closed again? What if this wrapped around and opened up so much that it flipped around and that's the angle? You can look at it that way too. That comes up in geometry. Okay? It's not always the little inside. It could be this big outside. That's the angle. It opened so much it flipped back around. Alright, let's see what we can find here. Do you see four obtuse angles? Four obtuse angles. What are obtuse angles? Do you remember? A straight angle goes straight across. Here, let's do a little review here. Straight angles go straight across like that, like a line. A right angle has a square right here, okay? 
and an obtuse angle is bigger than the square shape. See? My little red dotted line where the square would have been. And an acute angle is cute and little. It's smaller than where that square is. It's smaller than the red line. Okay? So obtuse is big and open, like he's obese, and acute is little and cute. Alright? So do you see four obtuse angles? Well, there's one here, there's one here, and the way angles work is if there's an obtuse angle here, the one on the other side is going to also be obtuse. So can you see the one for this one? It's right on the other side of it, isn't it? See how they're across from each other like that? Yeah, angles do that. Geom that's what happens in geometry. So those are our four obtuse angles. Do you see four acute angles? Let's take these away. Do you see four acute angles? They're usually next to the obtuse ones. If that's an obtuse one, then that's going to be an acute one. See? Do you see where its opposite one is? Mm-hmm. And then on this side, here's an acute angle. And do you see where its opposite one is? It's opposite right here. There you go. There's the four acute angles. Do you see three lines? Let's get rid of these again. Do you see three lines, three full lines? Not line segments, three full lines. Remember, they got arrows on the tips. There's one line, two line, three line. You see the little dotted lines here? Because lines go on forever, what if they did continue going in this direction? Do you see how they would eventually cross and create four more angles? Yeah. Do you see eight points? Yeah, all the black dots are points. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points. Do you see one line segment? Remember a line segment has two ends to it? No arrow tips. It's got two ends to it. Right here and right here. That's the line segment. See, from here to here is not a line segment because it ends with an arrow tip. See? That is a ray. There's six rays. There's a ray coming this way. There's a ray going up this way. There's a ray coming down here. There's a ray here. There's a ray here. And there's a ray coming down there. That's our six rays. Imagine them heading out that way. Okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to label this. We're going to label all these points. Okay? So we'd like for them to be in somewhat of an order. So we're going to start with the lines. So we're not going to name from this point to this point. We're going to name the actual full line. So we could say this is line AB. So we don't put the B there because we're not naming the ray. We're naming the line AB. See? And that's the full line. If we wanted to name this full line, we could call this one CD. And we could call this one any two consecutive letters, right? But since we're going in order so far, we can call this EF. So then what could we call the line segment? How about GH? So if I said, where is ray GC? You'd say, oh, it's right here, from here to here. And if I said, where's line segment GH? You'd say, oh, it's right here. That's a line segment, GH. And if I said, where's line EF? You'd say, oh, it's right there. So when we're doing geometry and we're working with the lines and line segments, we want to be able to identify which ones the homework is talking about, so we have to label them. We have no choice. Okay? Real quick, I don't know if you remember from the last video, but when we're naming an angle, if you're naming an angle, like inside here, this letter always has to come in the middle. Okay? Remember that. We talked about that. Always put the vertex letter in the middle. That's really important, okay? Even when we're talking about the polygon, if you're talking about this angle D, you can say angle D, or you could say ADC. But because we're talking about D, that would be the middle of the three letters that we use, okay? Naming lines and line segments with a little bonus of naming angles. I'm going to talk about triangles next. I'll see you there. Bye.